260 pages, including six four-page inserts. Case cover, PMS silver printed on Gamund, electric blood, 150 gram, mounted on three millimeter board. Foil stamped with matte pigment foil plus blind deboss. Finished with deckled four edge, striped head and tail bands. Book block, printed process, three PMSs on three papers, including Lawrence, 180 gram, Bulky Newsprint, 53 gram, Maiji, 180 gram. At Quickly, the revolution obliges. Its hours count as months, its days as years. Rosa Luxemburg, 1919. Pasadena snorts under flu masks. 60 violators of the new flu law are arrested first day. Los Angeles Times, 1919. 1919 was published to accompany a centennial exhibition of the Huntington Library. It explores the institution and its founding through the lens of the single tumultuous year, 1919, the very year their deed was signed and the library went public. My co-curator James Glisson and I, in order to center this exhibition, looked at everything in the vast collections of books, art, and plants that had to do with the year 1919, either published, copyrighted, edited, acquired, all to tell the story of that single year. And then there was also this second story that wove the book together. Nationally, suffragettes were demanding their right to vote and Red Summer unleashed months of horrific violence. And as Huntington was developing the railway tracks that would draw out LA as we know it today, labor unrest was rocking the Southland. Race riots, labor strikes, women's battle for the vote, the aftermath of the Great War, the transformative events and harsh realities of the year 1919 still reverberate a century later. I really, really love the inserts. I mean, yeah. I know I love them because I wrote them, but I also <laughs> loved the idea that, that in a centennial exhibition, you're supposed to foreground the founders yeah. And I love the fact that they take the background of mm, this mm -hmm. project, but that they're a very strong underlying note. It's like this drumbeat that kind of resonates through the whole book. One of the most important aspects of the book to us was to feature an event that had occurred at the end of 1919, when Henry Huntington invited a group of bookmen up to his private library to show them what he considered his greatest acquisitions. And so this was a little group, an elite event, and we wanted to have it right in the middle of the book in this little section, but we put it, we just made a decision to put it on newsprint, a very kind of quotidian kind of paper to make it the kind of central intimate experience it would have been for the people in attendance, but now for the reader, uh, the private reader, the private audience. So Jenny, you thought of this section as a coda. Right, so we'd end the book with this idea of showing the Huntington today, but sort of private spaces that, with historical references. I love that story that you tell about Huntington taking his guests to the basement. Yeah, so he was so proud of his house and the construction of his house, which he'd built to withstand earthquake and fire, that he would bring his guests down into the basement to show them how beautifully constructed it was. There's spaces that are still being used today as they were, like the library or the vault, and then spaces like the basement that have changed uses, but hold a lot of nods to the path. The framing is so like geometric <laughs> in a way. <laughs> you know, I always feel like it's a wonderful balance to kind of the chaos that I invite into my books. Like I invite chaos and then I like tame the chaos. <laughs> 